humans don't know who really have their back mm. until they show you who, that true who, who has your back and who's there for you and who wants you to eat together and who wants, who, who wants to vibe together. And one thing that I always say, I don't, give a, I don't care what the check, the, the number is on the check. If you pay me this much, how much are you making? Is my question. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, he said it in the past. He was like, yeah, Channing always wanted to know what the big check was and not his cut. I want to know what my value is. I'm not going for 7% or 8% of a check. Like, I, I'm, I'm worth more than that. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, can we, uh, I just want to say, um, shout out to everybody that been following the grind. Mr. J Hill Network, J Hill Podcast. Hey, it's a special. First of all, let's, 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 let's take care of what need to be taken care of. Uh, Graffiti Lounge, Atlanta. If you ever, uh, you looking for some food, the wings is crazy. I mean, it's amazing. Like, I'm not selling this. They ain't pay me to do this. It's, it's, it's just, I really mean it. The wings are amazing. The fries is good. Listen, fries taste better than McDonald's. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you ever, listen, if you ever in Atlanta, it's Graffiti Lounge. Yo, what, what street is on? Tell me the address. Street. It's specialized in seafood. It's, 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 oh, it's, you ain't had the boat, bro? Yeah. You, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't had the crab? Not yet. You ain't had the crab? Nah. Oh, my goodness. Nah, not yet. I had the blue crab. I what is it? What's, crab. What, what's the name? The, it's the, the crab is, what's, what is it? Yeah, what's uh, cracking what's crackin kitchen? What's cracking kitchen, kitchen? Yeah. inside of Graffiti Lounge? Hey, listen. Oh, my God. Listen, it's amazing. I, like, I can't yeah. make it. I, I'm yeah. not making this up. I'm not making it up. I don't bullshit. I, I, I don't lie. My thing is I don't lie. That's how I've been married so long. I don't lie. Yo. Black men don't cheat. I don't lie. <laughs> you said that's why you... Special guest in the building, man. Channing Crowder's <laughs> here. Hey, let's get it popping, man. Hey, Seven is here. What's up, Seven? We're good. Look at us, bro. I'm sorry. You know, I'm going to just be me. Isn't this amazing? I seen this guy last night in the club. I, I ran down on him like he was going to the bathroom. I'm like, man, I know I'm wilding right now, but I don't give up. Like, I, I don't care. Like, what, what, what club we was at? I forgot. We was at, you don't even know. The sweet. Was it sweet? Or? Oh, it was the second cup. We hit by four of them last night. The finesse night. was... The handshake, you yeah. ain't even know. <laughs> I set him up. I set him up with the handshake. I said, "I hope you're a man of your word." We already shook on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the text. <laughs> hey, nigga, we shook on. I'm like, God damn, I'm gonna put the pressure on me. Like, God damn, I told you I'm gonna come on and fuck with you. I'm gonna fuck with you. Yeah. Hey, we shook hands, <laughs> nigga. Yeah, nigga, I know. <laughs> I made sure so I put it in the text. Just like you know, we shook on at the time. You feel oh, me? So. I got you, bro. I love, I love to see. Just like we here with my man Easy. My man Travis Harris over here, that's about ace for 20 years, but I love to see young black men doing something. Mm. And so when you ran up on me, they, they, the old saying, uh, closed mouth don't get fed. Bro, well, for you to come, for you to run up on me in the club, I'm having a good time. I'm with my wife. We drinking. We, have, we, we, we messing off. And you to run up on me, holler at me, bro. I, I, well, I told you, I got I you because I love to see what you're doing. And then you showed me receipts. You went on to show me the views and like, yeah. bro, I'm doing this. I'm like, bro, I'm there for you whenever you need I me. I appreciate it, And man. then you hit me with the, what's up tomorrow? And I said, shit, let's ride. I appreciate it, dog. And it's crazy because I definitely wanted to approach it with respect because I seen you maybe like 30 minutes before, but I'm like, he at the table, he's with his wife, like, ah. So when I saw you get up, I'm like, you know what? I just follow you know what I'm saying? Unless you go to the bathroom, I ain't about to come in the bathroom with you. Yeah. Wait outside, let you do your thing. People was fucking with you. Yo, but let's get into it. I feel like that's I talked to a nigga in the bathroom. You would? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do it all the time. That's weird. But bro. I just like to look at people like you holding your you holding your shit and I'm looking over. I don't want to look at your shit. But just just to look well, at a man next to me and be like, bro, how you doing? You okay? You, you like a man in that vulnerable space. I just I just wanna I wanna see what I wanna see what you about. Wait, what? I just wanna see what you about. That's some next level down south if you, shit. If you can if you can have a conversation with me holding your dick and I'm holding my dick and we can look each other in the eyes and talk 
That means that you are alpha male. That means you are lying. That means you are lying. Like lions, when's the last time you saw a four, four, five male lions sitting around in the same area? It doesn't happen because they have territories. The thing that makes this shit run is when you have an alpha male, you got a lion that can sit and talk to another lion and just be comfortable with it. This some bullshit, man. No, this is real. It's some bullshit. It's real. Right, What's right. up, nigga? You good? Holding my dick, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We That's both crazy. That's yeah. crazy. I know, I know. And they think so, it's crazy. I so, knew you're a younger dude. I'm an old guy. That's what I need to see. So let's go into it. Let's fuck it. Let's this we here, right? Yeah. Talk about this nudist shit that you be doing. You Oh. Mm -hmm. the, the the nudist stuff? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It, so it's just it's fun. It's 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 like uh uh what's it called? Taboo. You know what I'm saying? Like taboo stuff that people do. And it's a thing that my wife got me into. Yeah, we, that's why I was going to go with it. Go ahead. Yeah, so we started going, like, we'll, we'll go to, we went to new beaches. And she, she's the one that encouraged it, so we went to new beaches and all. And, like, it's not a swinger type thing. Like, we ain't going out there to find nobody. But, like, my wife wants to, to tan her whole body and all. She got a badass body. So she wants to tan it all, and I love it because I love to, to dibble and dabble in her body. Of course. And so oh. then so then it was like there, there's, a, there's other places we can go that we can do the same thing you know, uh, internationally, and my wife got me into traveling. Mm. So I didn't even travel. If, if it was on me, to be honest, I would be in Miami and Atlanta. It would be the only two cities I ever touched because I love Atlanta, I love Miami. Mm. So it would be the two cities I ever touched. But now at work, I'm going to different places. And then with my wife, I'm going to different places. So she was like, yeah, we're going here. And it's, a, it's, a, um, it's called All Natural, an all natural thing. And that's yeah. where, like, you walk in, you get your little wrist bracelet, and then – People just being there walking around naked. Like, people look at it crazy, but if you think about it, so you got bathing, you got a bathing suit on, and the women got the little, the little string bikinis on and the little thong. Mm -hmm. It ain't but, I done seen all your whole body, but 3%. So I done seen 97% of your body already. Already. So fuck it, why not? Just so the pull out the other 3%. I, you know, I, Booty, you done seen all the booty. You know what the coochie look like under the under the drawers. Yeah. So just pull the coochie out. I, don't, yeah, I mean, that's and cool. And all they do is cover their nipples. So now I can see your nipples. But all you have is a string over your nipples anyway. That's just not impressive. And all, all you do is I don't see your coochie, but your coochie's there. Dudes be like, oh, they don't want niggas to see their dick. Man, fuck that. Did you see my dick? See my dick? I, I've been in locker room my whole life. Like, pull your dick out. Like, I, it, I'll tell you one thing. It's, I'm going to tell you this. A dick is comprised of two parts. Mm -hmm. A stick and berries. There were big sticks, there's little sticks. Mm -hmm. There's big berries, there's little berries. But they all fucking look the same. Okay. They all look the same. So I look at you and be like, oh, you got me by two inches. Okay. But you don't know how to work that dick. Wait. <laughs> like, I know how to work that dick. Bro. But why we, like, no, I don't even want to see what you got. Why not? Because that's fucking. What? Why? I just don't want to see, see it. I, it ain't none of my you. business. But it's not none of your business, so don't worry about it. Right. But why are you staying at why are you staying at the man's? man's I mean, that's a point. Pieces? That's a good point. That's a good you point. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I was gonna if ask you, you see a dude that's if you see a dude that's naked, so if you got if you got on a speedo, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Do you stay at the dude? Do you stay at the dude? No, I, I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? No, so now, saying. now, now he don't have on a speedo. He got his. He he's naked. Especially you when you run the track. Hey, yeah. yeah Are same. you gonna stay at the man's the man's little man, little man swiper then? No. Nah. So now he's naked. You gonna stay at the swiper then? No. Nah. Why no? And then at that point, everybody's naked, <clears throat> so it doesn't become it's not a thing anymore. It's not a it's not it's nothing of, attached to it because that's that's the all natural that's the freedom of it, and there's a lot of hippies there, and that's what I like. I like I like hippies. I like like people that's like open and free, and my wife is like that too. Is that like we we like those people that are like free with themselves. And like comfortable, mm. and I'll tell you one thing: nine out of ten people at a new resort are their their bodies are trash. So it's not it's not sexual anymore. Mm. It not, has nothing to do with being sexual. Like oh uh, no, it's like we're naked. Like we're naked, but we're chilling. And that's the thing. It's so funny it blew up, but it, it's not it's not like that big of a deal because if you think about it, everybody can see your shit in your in your swim trunks. They can see your, your lady's stuff in her drawers. They can see your lady's titties in her bathing suit. Now she take the top off and all you see is more nipple. It's a fucking nipple. No, I, I love nipples, but I'm not getting excited by a nipple. No, I feel it. I feel you it. know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that, yeah. That's the thing. The new resort thing is so funny because if you really break it down to what it is, 
it's it's not it's not as serious as people want to make it and they make it so taboo and that's the thing is like i'm i'm just i'm i don't really care what people say and think about me and now with that with with my wife like it, it kind of people were like they were so questioned they were questioning it and i'm like and i try to break it down and explain it to them like listen it's not that big of a deal the shit you do think of, this is my camera yeah, this go to your motherfucking um web search on xnxn.com or Pornhub and see what you like and see if it's not if it's not Weird. nastier than because they want to watch wives fucking wives and they want to watch big black dicks and they want to watch all this shit all I'm doing is hanging out with naked people so go to your motherfucking what's it called the what's, history? What's, what's in your porn history though what's it called my history yeah yeah I you know what it's funny because it's it's my wife <laughs> Wait, what? It's it, it's like my wife. My wife is a black Hispanic, so big booty Hispanics. Like I, I really try to find my wife when I when I want to beat my dick. I try to find my wife on online. <laughs> oh, I mean that's that's oh oh. It's so it's so it's so, it's so sweet. Uh -huh. I, I got it. My, listen, my wife instead of bar so high, I'd be like shit. Yeah. So wait, when you twenty and wild, be like these bitches ain't got no ass. So when you, I got, when, you, I when, you when you find your wife on Pornhub or what's your favorite site? X and X. Oh, uh, X and X. They got they, they get a little more edgy. They get a little more edgy. X and X. Pornhub but, a little more. Calm. Por, no, Pornhub. Porn can get, get lit if you get the right search. The right I, I, search. But I ain't gonna pay for no. I ain't gonna pay. No, for no, no, no. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta put the shit. right search. That's what they're saying. What's that? What's the shit that them people get famous off of? OnlyFans. Ain't no way I'm buying nobody's. I can go on XNXX for the free. What I'm gonna buy? Get and your they, goofy ass out of here. Bro, I ain't getting you no goddamn nah, $20. Nah, 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 nah. Let's stay here. Fuck that. The you you don't pay thing, for OnlyFans? No, hell no. The oh, crazy, okay. craziest thing is, right? I didn't see girls finesse niggas on OnlyFans. You go to that OnlyFans and it be like bikinis. It's like, what the? That's a. I feel like. You should be able to put a, a loss a lawsuit for every girl that finesse a nigga out of OnlyFans money. And to get that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, if I, you ain't I, naked. And you ain't showing. I just feel like you shouldn't be on OnlyFans. Post the shit on I've Instagram. Never, I've never gone on OnlyFans. I heard about it, but so now, but now it's funny because now the OnlyFans done hit the the free sites. Right. That's almost you never seen OnlyFans. We had a. I know what it is, but I've never been. I've never been around. Had, I've never. We had the link. With them. I don't know if I forgot what, what type of site it was. We had the link with mad free OnlyFans content. Like it was all in one type of hub. I forgot the name yeah. of it. Shit was crazy. But I need I need long videos. Reddit. It was on Reddit. That was Reddit. I need long videos because I, I like I like to enjoy myself. I think my own. Um, yeah, I can't. I, I'm. It, Wait, how long you going with your masturbating pause? That's a crazy question, but it's fine. Yeah, I, I like I like to set it up. I like the pre the pre the pre show. Yeah, I make listen. I light a candle. I make love to myself. So you gonna use the uh, the, the toy, the male toys they got now? The little uh, what the, what what they got? You ain't see the toy with the the shit that. It's, it's similarly like it's uh, giving you head. Y'all ain't see the toy? The male toys? I'm the only one? Yeah, the sloppy five. So you nasty, nasty. Nah. I ain't, yeah, I ain't you nasty, it. nasty. You it, sloppy. Yeah, I'm married, so it's just, I'll tell you this. My wife, she'll get up, and I we'll talk, and I'll be like, we'll drop the kids off, come back to the house. And I'll be like, she'll be like, I'll get home from dropping the kids off, and I see her already getting ready to work. And I'll be like, well, what you got to do? She'll be like, well, I'm showing the house in Core Springs. I'm showing the house, you know, 9.30. And then at 10.30, we're riding down to Core Gables and all. And I, I can do the math in my head to know she ain't going to be home for like five, six hours. And I'll get there and we'll talk. And I'll be sitting there staring out the window for that fucking Tesla to drive backwards. And as soon as that bitch leave the driveway, I'm in there on one. Isn't it? That's, I think. Um, what? I think. Um, I go in there. I get butt naked. <laughs> I get butt naked, no socks, no nothing, baby booty naked. And I lay in the middle of the bed and I, I use her pillow just to let so her know. You can, you can smell the scent. <laughs> if you can feel the fragrance, you can smell the fragrance. Just smell I let her know. I, I can smell her. And I go in and I, I set the phone up. Yeah, man. Do, oh, you don't bro, do the big screen TV? No, no, I like my little phone. I like my little phone. <laughs> I like motherfuckers that still feel like I'm being, I'm doing wrong. I'm doing wrong. Okay, like, make it feel like I'm sneaky. Yeah, I'm, I'm still sneaky. sneaking. Yeah, I'm okay, still okay. sneaking, but I can still light it up and I can lay it on the pillow. I can still light it up. Then I go left, right, left, right because it's different people. Okay. Yeah, left and the right hand are di different people. Bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. Porn, for me, it takes, it don't take forever to finish, but it takes forever to start. I'm trying to find the right one. Mm -mm. That shit take forever. How old are you? I'm 31. 
You don't just need to see a naked woman to get excited. Nah, she gotta look good. You know what I'm saying? It gotta be the right. You feel me? Like, like you say, you're looking for your wife. You can't just see, see a, a right. random chick. I tell you one thing though, if I see a grandma in one of them slips with that little wolf pussy, <laughs> I get excited. Ain't no way. Yeah, I get excited. That shit's disgusting. No, it's not. Like, it's a woman and it's sexual. You gotta get excited, man. You got babies? Nah, I have a stepdaughter, yeah. So you ain't never you ain't never skeeted and made a baby? That's why. Because you you, <laughs> no, too pick, mean, you too picky. You too no, picky. No, I know. I've You got a high class penis. No, no I mean. You, you got a high class penis. Yeah, yeah, no, you funny acting. Man, sometimes you gotta just throw the dick. Hey. Yeah, I, I think I do I have a girlfriend of like five years now. So like I think I, know, I do well. But you ain't made no babies. Things happen. Maybe. You feel that's all I'm saying. I gotta be respectful. Things happen. Yo, speaking of respectful, what's that? Is what you putting that out in the in in the open and getting so much attention behind going to nudist colonies and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did how did that make your wife feel? Because it's kind of like you. I don't know if, it, if she felt like you overstepped the boundaries or not. It was it, it um. Yo, what's popping? This episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. A social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10, you get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices. It did, like, because it, it's really the only the only person that I care, and it's crazy. It's it's cool to say, like it's. I don't know if it's encouraging to say, but just like honestly, the only person I care about their opinion in the world, and it makes me, but it also it comes on the back end. Is my wife's the only person I care if they like what, what I say if she likes it or doesn't like it? Mm. Because other people, like I always say, uh, put a value on your evaluators. Mm. So people, people, people try you or people test you or, you know, social media and all these people talking to you. And I don't care what, you know, Johnny 56453 says. Like, I really don't care. I don't right. even, like, I don't, I have no concern. But my wife, and then when I brought, when I started bringing her into it, out of it. What was her side? What was the conversation it, like? It was, it was kind of like, you know, saying like, you're, I, she knows it's jokes too. Like, it's jokes and it's funny and it, and it's. It, it, it fuels it fuels uh, uh, views and it fuels that and people love it, but it also like she has to deal with that t as mm -hmm. well. So I I didn't I didn't um, consider her side of it and dealing with like what people are gonna tell her. So like I say something I talk about nudist colony I talk about like our sex life and it's funny and everybody laughs and it goes viral. But then she has to go to work the next day. She mm -hmm. has to you know show clients that she's in real estate. So like. And her clients are asking her about this topic because it's so big. So now she has to justify or talk about things that I said because I brought her into it. And that's one thing that I um, I had to learn speaking with her and talking with her. And we, you know, saying we still go with it. And I won't tell her in advance. And that's one thing that I, I would say the biggest the biggest regret is that, like even with Kevin Hart and the Nudist Colony, I knew I was gonna take that angle and I had that question written. But I should have ran it past her. I didn't run it past her before I said it because I knew that was going to get a rise out of Kevin. And now we can like, perfect, perfect segue. Yeah, right? the, the 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 back and forth of me and Kevin. I knew that would be a great topic, and I knew that would be a, it would a intriguing. The, the and audience, it would be something. Attention. It would be something good. But I should have. I should have not even like told my wife I was going to do it, and not let her see it when the rest of the world sees it. So let me ask you that, right? Because that's a great point. And sometimes we could, like, you know, run things through our, our partners because that's a respectful thing to do. But question, if you ran that past and she doesn't like it, do you think that would be putting a cap on your creativity? Because if, if she says no and, mm. you don't, and you don't do it because of the respect for your wife, because you're a great man, I'm assuming you wouldn't do it, right? Because if she's not like it, you wouldn't have that moment with Kevin Hart, which wouldn't give you guys so many more followers and so many more listens. Um, I could have... It, it is it's, it's a great question. Because if, if I if that got vetoed, what what could I create another moment with him like that on another topic? And it would be that I would have to create something else mm. to do it. So do I have to dig deeper in my bag? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I know, I know what funny is. Like, I, I do funny, and like that's my role. So do what I what I what I have to dig deeper in my bag to find another topic. If she was to say, like, don't say that, probably, yeah. Mm. But I would I would have had to dig deeper, and it's not it it's not a a a a, a thought of this or that. It's just a thought of like what's worth it and all that. And I even talked to my wife about it at the time. And I, and she respects the fact. She knows how like that moment, what that moment did. And she understands, you know, saying like that was amazing. Like she sees it, but it's still like, okay, it worked. But to what expense? I, yeah, to, to what too. expense of it? And and then that, that's the mid ground of now she has to speak on it. I have to speak on it. And it's that it's it's that uh figuring out the back end of things. So the front the front side of and this thing with business, this thing with a lot of stuff too, bro. The front side of stuff, the decision they made on the front side, for every action there's a reaction. Mm. So now a lot of people don't think about the reaction. The action you can think about, the reaction you can't. So even on that, speaking about nudist colonies and you know, nudist, you know, thing we go to, where now my wife's getting uh, tweets and DMs and stuff about it too. And now she has to know how to deal with that. Mm. And I'm getting tweets and stuff and I don't even, and she, she does my social media stuff. So she's seeing all that as well. So it's like, it, it's action and reaction. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't, they don't think about the back end of it. They think about right now, I'm going to do this. Okay. So then what about a month from now, two months from now, five months from now, five years from now. And that's the thing I think a lot of people can't uh, equate and that's why, like the team that I have around me, they they do the. I can't I can't equate it either, but they do the they do the work. I think it's to just to add on to that. I feel like my girl has, has taught me this, like just being honest. And when when I always you always do something, and you make a mistake. I'm like, yo, that wasn't my intention. I didn't intend to make you feel this way, but you you did that, and it hurt because you wasn't intentional, right? So if you was intentional, you would specifically lay out something and you would say okay what are the what are the what are the reactions that i can get from this what are the cause and effect that comes with this right so i feel like a lot of us we just got to do more we got to do a better job at being intentional about our work and not just lollygagging like lollygagging and just doing anything and having uh problems come from it you know what i'm saying because if we get intentional yeah. about it then we'll, we'll cross our t's and dot all our eyes you know what it is uh-oh my wife's over there something we talked about it's really just communication for sure that's what it is. That that's the breakdown. But you gotta of, be intentional that's the, with communicating. It's the breakdown of ninety nine percent of relationships is mm. communication. Facts. And that's what, bro. It, it's that that's what keep y'all together, and that's what break y'all up. It's communication because, like you saying, if I'm doing this because of this, because of this, because of this. So the even the reaction, the action reaction thing. If it's clear, and this this is not just with women. This is with business partners. Mm. If it's clear why I think this will work. And what I think this will be on the other side. Now, now we're seeing what the progress is and what the transaction is about. And if it, in the backside, if it doesn't work out, we weren't right on it. Mm. We weren't right about what the back end was going to be. And now we have to move forward from there. Like the pivot, the, the podcast I have, we say uh, accept, adjust, and move forward. You have to accept that that didn't work, adjust the plan and move forward. And that's what pivot means, you know, mm -hmm. turn. And that's the thing too, with, even with relationships. And that's the thing, like if you communicate and say, I'm going to do this and I think this is going to happen. If the think of this doesn't happen, everybody's, everybody understands that it didn't happen. Mm. But it, it, you don't learn until you fail. <clears throat> Failure teaches you. Yes. Failure teaches you, what, bro. Was he talking about that? He's just talking about that. Yeah, failure <laughs> teaches you. People... Everybody, people that have been successful every time they try something, they're not strong people because they just float through. Oh, okay, I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah, I made money. I'm going to do this. Oh, this is great. I'm going to do this. When you do something and you're so passionate about it, really passionate about it, and, it's, and it, it's, it's dumb, it's goofy, it fucking doesn't work, that's when you say, okay, and then you can really analyze what happened from the genesis of it to the failure of it. And that's why failure makes you grow. And that's the thing that I do. Everything we do, I failed five, six, seven, ten times more than I've succeeded. But the successions are big time. It, it, it shows out. It's, it's worth it. It's tenfold. It, you receive the blessings tenfold. Yeah. I, and that, <clears throat> you, that, 
that, but that but that's the thing too is that you you look at uh if you you, you listen to Bezos and 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 Ruck, Zuckerberg whatever the motherfuckers them little them little is it called Zuckerberg I don't know this nigga's name yeah fuck it but we if you listen like them them billionaire dudes they all say the same thing and I really love to listen to people talk and just listen to people's mind frame. And um, one of them dudes even said, he said, they asked him why was he so successful. And he said, my, my father, every time I asked him a question, he would either answer the question or we would look it up together. Because mm. there's always an answer to a question. And that's why, that's why he, he really put that in, like he went way back. He was like, my dad never told me I don't know. So with our kids, me and my wife's kids, I never tell them I don't know. I always look it up. If I know the answer, hey, hey, daddy, is, is Tyreek here going to be a, uh, you know, a Hall of Famer? I'd be like, yeah, he'll probably be a Hall of Famer, but let's look at some numbers. So we'll Google the numbers compared to the Hall of Fame receivers and stuff like that. Like, I, I, think, I think information and education is what makes people succeed because you know past success or failures – and you can adjust to past success or failures mm. of whatever people do. And even in this space, the podcast space, it's new. So we we looked at Breakfast Club. We looked at looked at um stacking them, stacking barns and them boys, all the smoke. Like when we got into podcasting, it wasn't like, hey, let's shoot some shit. Like we looked into the ones that were succeeding and seeing what they did, what where they succeeded, where they failed. I talked to Matt. I talked to Stack. Like, you know what I'm saying? We talked to Charlemagne. Like, we looked into it to see why is this successful. Joe Buttons, we talked to people to see why is this successful. And just, and it's so funny that people want to, they want to help out. People mm. want to help out. That synergy. People want to help you, but closed mouths don't get fed. And That's people right. don't, people really don't. It's funny because you ran up on me last night in the club. First time I saw you was last night in the club. Last night in the club. And you ran up on me like, bro, come on the pod. And I was like, bro, I got you. Because I saw, like, that, that, that energy and that vibe was like, oh, this motherfucker grinding. Yeah. And that's what it is, bro. But reach out to people. Text people. DM people. We DM. I DM the shit out of people. Well, I don't DM. My wife DMs the shit out of people. But just to talk to people and be like, hey, man, what's up? You good? Man, shit, jump on the pot, and people will be there for you hey, because get... humans, that synergy, that getting together, it's the same thing at Rafiti Lounge. This easy. Travis Harris, that's my man for 20 plus years. So that's what we was doing. You, you said do the pot. I was like, shit, we're gonna do it at my homeboy restaurant. We're mm-hmm. gonna do it at my homeboy spot. Because that's that's the 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 what people need to do is just get good people together and figure out how we're going to make this work. Everything will work. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I don't think people do do a lot do a lot nowadays. And to be honest, I don't think black people do it enough nowadays. Yo, I, I'm glad you went there because we talked about the business and it was a great segue of talking, huh? Of talking about um yeah, I think I'm I think I'm good. Uh we talk about the business and and I'm sorry. We talk about the business and we seen I am athlete. You say you guys search Charlemagne, you guys looked at Joe Button, you guys looked at uh all, all all up in smoke. All the smoke, yeah. All the smoke and things like that. But your platform was, it was like the first of its kind. It was so new, unique and not the first of its kind because it was athletes talking because we've seen athletes talk before, but it was the first of its kind to see the conversations that you guys was having. And you got, at first, you guys wasn't even talking sports. It was just special. Yeah. Was y'all ready for what came with that? I, um, I think we, we, we were surprised by how fast it blew up. We were surprised by it. That shit's crazy. And it was fun. And it started with talking like that. Like, uh, uh, me and me and, and B, we're in the backyard. We have our feet in the pool. We drinking beers. Our kids are playing together in the pool. And we're talking about, and I'm kind of telling him about this real estate thing that my wife got me into. These Airbnb, well, that's when Airbnb kind of started and it was rolling. And, and I was, I was telling, I was telling B about these Airbnb things that were going on. And I'm like, yeah, and that's so we talking about the return and talking about the, um, you know, if you section eight, then you get this and government sends you a guaranteed check. So I'm like, we're talking about that. He's talking about some investments. And then we were kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like people don't think black dudes sit and talk about like this wealth building. Mm. You know, like people don't, people don't, people don't see two alpha male, black alpha males. I call them lions. I call us lions. You don't see lions sitting around talking about like life and family, we're married. I'm married for 12 years. He's married, and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all, all that's, all that's uh, publicized is 
throwing money in the strip club and buying cars and all that. But like people don't think about like that that like we're we're businessmen. Mm. We're all businessmen. We have a number of companies. I have, I don't know how many fucking LLCs I have, but it's a bunch of fucking LLCs, and this is there, and this is that, and this is that, and my manager does this. And so that's how it started is like, let's get these lions, these black male lions all up and show people that we can all sit on the same platform and talk. And that's how it started. And so then once the I Am Athlete thing, once it blew up because uh, of the power struggle and the 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 – it wasn't very transparent where the money was because the money started coming in. Because but shit wait, blew let's up. pause, right? Let's not fast. So let's let's not. I don't want to skip through this. No, men, we're talking about like you said. They don't see the the things that we're talking about. The, the the money, the power plays that we're talking about right behind the closed doors. If this is who you guys are, and these are the conversations that you have, and how do you miss that conversation? That was the thing because you you get with your homeboys and you like, okay, cool, let's do this. Cool, cool, cool. Let's but do you this. got a hundred, like you said, mad LLC. So you, it ain't like you, uh, you're not, you're not stupid. You're not but, oblivious to the business. But you overlook it because it's your homeboy. That's what I think a lot of people do, and that's what that's what we did. We overlooked it because it was the home. It was the dude. Like I said, if you start a business sitting around drinking beer with your feet in the pool, you know what I'm saying? Like, and and I tell you, I dropped the ball on it. Okay. Because on the other side, there there's there's a. I have a team. Johnny Williams is my attorney. He's a stupid attorney. CPAs, business managers. Uh, Alex Alexis, my money man, is a dog. Merrill Lynch, man, he's a like. I have people around me. But even when we started that, I if somebody comes up to me in public right now, and I, it happens, it happens three times a week. Somebody runs up to me in public. I, I'm shopping. I'm buying, you know, salmon and shit. And the dude was like, "Hey, man, I want to open a sports bar." I got this plan, I got this, I got that, and, and I entertain them. I'm like, yeah, man, cool, man, it sounds good. What, you need an investor? Yeah, I need an investor, cool. At the end of the conversation, I'm going to give him my attorney's number and say, call Johnny Williams and call Alex Alexis. Mm-hmm. If you can get them to believe in it, mm. I'll believe in it because I know they're great at their jobs, and that's why I've dealt with them for 15, 20 years. Like, they're great at what they do. With, with the I Am Athlete situation, it was homeboys sitting around drinking, hanging out, bullshit, and that's why I, I did not go through the normal, the normal approach to how I do business because we're homeboys. We talking, we just set this thing off. It was COVID. We're sitting around like it was a flaw. It was a flaw on all on all sides. We were just we were, we were we were too open just to, okay, yeah, let's see what happens. And then what we saw what happened went crazy, and then we were like. Oh damn, we we need to tighten up the business, and by that time we couldn't tighten up the business. And that's why I'm glad we had this conversation. And I, I was thinking about it from a different angle, and it's really like I get it, but I don't get it because I'm coming up in the business, right? So granted, I'm looking at these grown men and these these powerful influences that like y'all know the voice y'all have, y'all 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 know the platforms that y'all got. Granted, you probably don't know don't know what's, what it's going to come from, but I just don't try to be respectful in this. I don't I don't see that being an excuse because like that was your friend. So if you you said y'all did the research, right? Yeah. How, how how could you say you did the research and you know this shit happens? We seen Joe Button and mm-hmm. Roy Yamal. We seen that. We, we seen, seen Molly them. We, we seen smoke. We seen. So if you saw that, how can you not know to get the business right for the sake of your friendship? Because it, it was it was it's it's just fluke and stuff. It's like the divorce rate is fifty two percent in America, right? Mm-hmm. You know that over fifty percent. I don't know what the number is, but it's over fifty percent. So you go into you go into a marriage. Nobody wants to get divorced. For sure. But over half of the people that get married get divorced. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that was the thing that we really... And now at this point, I would tell you to your, to your question, I feel crazy is that I, I have so many companies. We have, like I say, we got more LLCs. My wife, she does a, like our real estate stuff and the business and the shark diving and the charter boats and the stuff that we do. It's always business first. But it it goes back to why Jeff Bezos got divorced, right? I don't know why did he. The, but them billionaires get divorced. Oh yeah, for sure. So they're geniuses, they're billionaires, but they can't work this out with another human being. You see, you see what I'm saying? No, I get it. It's just, <clears throat> but 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 no 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 no. Go ahead. But it's the same thing. Like if you look at you, you're like, why cannot this work out? Y'all should be able to figure this out. 
Why can't married couples figure it out? Divorce rates over 50%. So half of the people that get married get divorced because they can't emotionally figure this out. They can't figure out how to do this. And I think that's what happens in the big picture of things is that, okay, now it's, it's something. How are we going to deal with this something? And we couldn't deal with that something. And the something was the money thing? It, it, was, it was the money thing, and it was um, who controlled it. It was like the transparency of everything. Do you think it was some? Just looking back on that situation, do you feel like it was something that you could have did differently? Um, get the the business side settled before we even shot a show. That that was the one thing, and that's what we did. Actually, with Pivot, that's what we did with Pivot. We had we had a business, we had the structure, we had the Pivot LLC to all of uh, you know Fred Ryan, myself, our attorney, our producer, our LLCs. We had a whole business structure, a pyramid set of where the money funnels and all. But we learned from the the last. Thing. So whatever, every penny that comes into the pivot, it funnels, you know what I'm saying? It funnels down and we know where it's going and we know where it's, where it's achieving. But the, it's, it's like a, it's, it, the simplest thing is a business plan. And our business plan, I would say I, I would have, if I knew what the last situation was going to be, we should have set up a business plan like the pivot has mm. from day one. If we set up that business plan, I don't know if we'd be where we are now because everything would be set. Are y'all still like friends? We cool. No real talk. Like it, it ain't no like people ask me all the time. Like, oh, y'all gonna fight? We're not fighting anybody. I'm, man, First I'm, of all, we grown as I'm men. thirty nine years old. I ain't fighting. Yeah, wait, no I'm more. saying, but are y'all cool? My we only, see my own. I got three more fights left in me, and that's from my daughter's boyfriends. Mm. <laughs> that's all I got. If my daughter, if I got a daughter, she is she is stupid beautiful, and I know somebody gonna act crazy, and I'm gonna fight some little seventeen year old boy one day. I got three left in me. Okay. I'm not fighting no girl, No, for man. sure. Not even that. I think that's a childish even... That's a childish question. Not even fighting, though. Like, I just feel like I'm... Come on, bro. We see what's... Yeah. Hey, listen. We see what's going on on the internet. Y'all talk about... Y'all had y'all had 100 interviews about the same shit. And when I actually... I'm not asking are y'all cool just for the sake of it because it don't seem like... It seemed like y'all niggas is on the internet just, like, going at it. Like, not going at it, but, like, you know, now it's starting to get a little messy. I feel like, just being honest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it don't look like friends. I don't feel that. And that's yeah. why I ask you, are y'all really still friends? It's, um, it, it, it's funny because i tell you this. If you think about it, there are so many different dynamics. So there's B, there's Shady, there's Pat. So there's three people on this side. Mm-hmm. There's me, there's Ryan, there's Freddie. Mm-hmm. My, my dog's on this side. So if you think about it, everybody has their own relationship with the other person. With, with the other three dudes. So it's three times three. So it's nine relationships. Mm. So it's not like us versus them. It's nine relationships that got to be solved. And there's been a lot of disrespect on both sides towards different people from different angles. So person number one, number two, number three. Person number one, number two, number three. So like if person number one talk crazy to person number three, does, do, 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 does I, do I get mad? You ain't disrespect me. You just met my homie, and I it, it's 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 a receipt in the back of my head. But you didn't disrespect me, so it it it's the dynamic of, and I have to go back to it with lions and all them dudes. All the six guys I said are six lions. They're they're dudes that run their world, like they have a they, they're the son of a solar system. So you get three three people like that around three people like that around each other on one side, three people like that around each other on the other side. All of it's not going to vibe, but I would say from my end, my solar system, people don't really act crazy towards me because people think I'm crazy, and I am crazy. So it's like, no, you're not going to really talk. You're not going to disrespect me in, in, a, in a crazy way because I'm not, they know I'm not built to deal with that. But from other people and all the arguments that go on in them other solar systems, if y'all can get the analogy, it might be something different. But... I have no, man, I, I sleep so good every night. I sleep like a baby at night. I'm mm-hmm. not worried about nobody else. I'm not worried about no other nigga. I'm not worried about that. Me and my wife lay next to each other. I cuddle up, and I go to bed like a, like a two-year-old. No, I, I mean, I get it. It's just, at first, just being honest, right? I'm a fan and a supporter before anything, right? I got my own shit. I know my shit is good. And, but I, I, I feel like I speak for so many other people that look at y'all show before we even get to the pivot, right? Because that's a great show too. 
But so many people looked at that show as like inspiration and, and it added so much value to our lives. And I feel like I speak for a lot of people when I say that. So it's cringeworthy to say, like, and I, I'm glad we had this conversation because as much as I, you're inspiring and I admire you, I, I, we're still a, we're still men. I hope we could have a man conversation. Uh, I'm so I say many. no, no. So I say that. What yeah. so I say to say it's cringeworthy to see a bunch of men, like people that we inspired by, that started something so great, in here over some fucking bullshit. It's just like I just feel like y'all should be able to put y'all egos to the egos to the side. You talking about going to a nudist colony and not looking at niggas' dicks? Put your dick down and talk to niggas as men and be like, yo, look, it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? We apologize at least squash it so it won't be a bunch of mess on it. And I just feel like. Y'all owe that to y'all, to not only y'all selves, yeah, but at least the people that that supported y'all and loved y'all, man. But it, it's it looks it's, crazy um, right now. But it, it's it's it you you have to mm, you have to see you you have to you have to know where what people really have your back and what people don't. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I think a lot of people get caught up in. A lot of young, I say, it, young black dudes and young you know young people get caught up in is that they don't know. Like it, it, and I'm not, you know what? Take that shit out of there. Take black, take young, take all of it. Humans don't know who really have their back mm. until they show you who, that true who, who has your back and who's there for you and who wants you to eat together and who wants, who, who wants to vibe together. And one thing that I always say, I don't give a, I don't care what the check, the, the number is on the check. If you pay me this much, how much are you making is my question. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, he said it in the past. He was like, yeah, Channing always wanted to know what the big check was and not his cut. I want to know what my value is. I'm not going for 7% or 8% of a check. Like, I, I'm, I'm worth more than that. So that's the thing, too, is that you have to, and it, it goes back to the business plan. It goes back to the private equities that I'm in. It goes back to the, the real estate investments that I'm in with my, you know, with my wife is that we have, you have to put a, a number on what? If you're going to spend $100,000 on anything, or $100, or $1, 7% of $1, 7 cents. 7% mm -hmm. of 1,000, 7,000. 7% of a million. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you can do the math on that. I always want to know the math, and the math wasn't clear. And the math was all spreadsheets that you can create, but I need to see receipts. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that was the problem is that I, I always need facts. And that's how I run. I'm very analytical. My mind's analytical. And it's actually a analytical people, it's a knock, it's a knock in relationships because it's so mathematical that it doesn't attest to emotion. Mm. Like you're talking about y'all boys and black men and y'all homeboys and y'all do this and that and this. Oh, I understand it. But what percentage are you giving me? Eight? No, I don't need eight. I'm worth more than eight. I need fifteen. Mm. Like you know what I'm saying? Like and that it, 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 and it's 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 a mid ground of what am what am I worth to this business? And there's so many other businesses going on, and we have so much stuff going on. And that's how I run the other businesses. We run the real estate with my wife. We run the the charter boats we have. We run the shark diving company we have. We run so much thing on return. You know, uh, APY. And a APR and all that, like the numbers of it. So now you get with one of your homeboys and you're not concerned with the percentage. So you run every business that you have. And we have 15 businesses. But now you get with, a, you get with your friend and now you just, and that's what, I, and I'll say it, that's what we did. We all just ran into it. It's like, oh, this is fun. This is good. It's not good. Let's figure out the numbers. If we do get a million dollars, how much am I making off that million? And that's what we didn't do. And that's why it broke. And I would take full credit for not figuring that shit out before I did. Mm. And Freddie, too, will take full credit for not figuring that shit out before we did. We both have two different situations. But the learning part, like I say, the failure, failure makes you learn. The learning part now is that the pivot, we got that shit buttoned up. Can I ask you this? Every dollar that comes in, I know how much I'm making off that dollar. What, how do you measure your value and your worth in a situation like that? How do you measure your value? You know it. You really know it. You know, I know if I'm on anything, even this podcast, to be honest, I'll no, tell do you. Your thing, do your thing. I know that my voice means something. I know that I'm going to, whatever I say, people are going to listen to. I know that I'm funnier than most motherfuckers in any room. 
I know that I'm more intriguing than everybody in the room. Like I, I and my wife confirms it all the time. She's like, you got to value, you got to value your time and value who you are. And I know it. So if you make a hunt, if I did like, and be honest, I ain't making no money off this shit. Like, I don't know what you make. Your YouTube views. Yeah, man, you got it, bro. Thank you, I'm, brother. I'm about, I'm about, I'm about, I run it up, run it up, run it up. Get, get your bread. Appreciate it. But like. So don't hold back. Just let you know. Yeah, but this, this but, th but this, this situation, I look at my camera, like. Please talk. I'm not going to be asshole. No, talk. No, but say when I say. when I walk like when I walk in here, I don't know if y'all when I walk in here, when I walk in rooms and I'm start I'm starting to tell people this and it was something I thought for a long time and I didn't say it, but now I'm telling a lot of people this. When I walk into a room, I say you're welcome, mm. not thank you. Mm. I'm here. You're welcome. Where do you want me to go? I'm here now. You're welcome. Not thank you for having me. Like and, and and I love bro. No, all love no, to be no. on the pod, but hey, like, no, you like good. nigga, you're I'm welcome. Show you something. You're welcome that I'm here. Like that's and that's the thought of what people should be, and that's the thought of what I think. So, with everything I do, if 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 I wasn't on um, the other show, it wouldn't have blown up like that. If I'm not on, I am. Uh, if I'm not on um, pivot. It's not gonna blow up like that. I love Fred and RC, and they have their role. If I'm not there, it's not blown up that way. I'm not on this show. It's not blown up like that. And we know it. And Fred respects it, and Ryan respects it, and they respect it. Right. And I respect them. The pivot would not have blown up without Fred. The pivot would not have blown up without RC. And I respect them too. But you have to value yourself and know that I bring something to this table. So whenever I walk into a room, it's it's like. It's really your welcome, and it oh, sounds sure. cocky, it and it doesn't. sounds like assholes. But no, don't thank people to be in your room, and all the young people out there don't thank people to be in that room. They need to thank you for being in that room. Okay. And that's that's when the mind frame changes. Is that I'm here now. I'm here now. So I was showing you on my. Uh, that's why I say don't. You don't have to hold back anything because I understand. And when you're confident, and I feel like I say this a lot. A lot of times, men lack confidence, so they can't they can't take other people's testimony. You could come to us and say, I sit at a table and I raise the stock. And I understand that because I can understand, I can still have an understanding of myself and the way I'm going at with or without you, right? Respectfully, right? So I had that same respect for you. I was going to say, I just posted a picture. I said, yo, I never been the, I never been the glad to be here type. I'm more so of the, you, let me show you why you took too fucking long, right? Like <laughs> you really took too long to have me on here. Like I, I said it with Bel Air, like respectfully, I thank God is a, is a, is a, is a dope, um, is a dope opportunity, but let me show you why you took too long. You get what I'm saying? I, yes. I still can be appreciative. And it's not cocky. It's just I know my worth. So I understand what, you, what you're saying. You know your worth. But let me ask you this, though. When I say, how do you judge your worth? Because I, I think the story is out there that you wanted to get paid from it, right? Like, you just wanted to get paid. Um, I think he put, uh, put in all the money, right? He put up all the money up front mm -hmm. for it. So if I put in all the money up front for it, right, how, how, am I, how do you come in into a situation that kind of I built, right? I put this money in. Yeah, we... It, but it couldn't be no channing the personality without the cameras that I bought. It couldn't be no channing the personality without the the the, the lights and the production. And let's be real. You did radio for what, 12 years? Mm -hmm. You you ain't never been this channing. Respectfully. Yeah. Oh no, Respectfully. no, no I got you. Yeah. So so I'm asking you, how do you how do you put a number on on that for people that's looking at that got production? How you put a number on that? Because, bro, you came into something and with all due respect, because of the the, the thing that I poured into this helped you get to another level, yeah. right? So how do you put a number to that, being respectful of all parties? Oh, yeah. No, 100%. And I, I tell you, B, B, B did do a lot. Um, off bat, the, uh, the, 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 we had a chance to invest early, but the contracts weren't, they weren't buttoned up. They weren't, they were very unprofessional. The contracts early were unprofessional. But it, it, it's a situation where if, you put everything into it. And I say this, after the money started coming in, I said a number of times, I was like, pay, your, pay off all the cameras. Like, this was my thought. So now the money's coming in. Like you're saying, the whole investment, whatever the cameras were, whatever the production crew, whatever that, pay that off. Because now money, we're getting checks. Mm -hmm. So money's coming in. Pay that off. I, let's get to zero. So now we're making money. Pay off the camera. Pay off the production. Pay off everything. Let's get to zero. And now let's break it down. 
How though? Which way? We, is it going to be evenly? Let's break it down evenly. Is that fair though? Or oh, or no no no. Actually, he could he could took uh, have taken more, but equally distributed out over everybody. But so you in, you invest a hundred thousand dollars into something right that right. you didn't know was going to work right. But now, I took a risk. Now, but you took a risk. Right. So now it made three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. How much money do you deserve from that hundred thousand you invested? Was it just me? That's, that's yes, yeah, just you. Um, the whole thing. I would assume the three hundred. Yeah. So you need three times of what your investment was. Whatever. I even mean, though without without me, no, that's why it would have been nothing. No, that's what, if no, 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 I'm asking. Is it just no, me? No, 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 no. The exact situation you're talking about. Oh, the exact situation. I honestly, just being honest, I really don't know, and that's why I wanna I wanna ask this question. Yeah. I feel like it's so y'all really setting a pace for so many other people. Yeah. And we can learn from this, and I feel like you know honestly, hypothetically, I don't know if um. If you if, if you I spend hundred you, you spend hundred racks hundred racks right and I got my, my guy that's helping me right yeah whatever his contribution was to making us blow up that's what I think he should get so for example if 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 if, if, if the effort if we measuring things by effort okay I bought the uh, I bought the equipment that's a, a a third of the effort okay um I had the platform now that's um fifty percent of the effort uh what else did I bring to this let's let's look at it right what did you co contribute okay you came in. You uh you, you helped me set up. That's that's blood, sweat, and tears. Okay, that mm -hmm. might be ten percent. Let's um you, you you made sure that we we was we was we was all the cameras was focused. Okay, that might be five percent. What what is what is each part worth, right? And then after we add it up, then we we break it down like that, right? That's how I think of it. But that's what I'm asking you. How do you measure your worth? How do you put a, a number or a dollar sign on your value coming into that situation? My my thing was, you if whatever you put in, mm -hmm. pay yourself back with interest. And I said it. Okay. That, that's my thought. Like, if you take if you take a hundred thousand dollars, like I, you can give me you can give me a hundred dollars. I can give you a hundred and seven dollars back a year from now. Like, a, APR. You know what I'm saying? Like the APR and all. Like, if you can't get ten, if you can't get double digit percentages, you're not a good financial financial advisor. And my financial advisor, I'm always in the you know the the nine ten percent of it. So you can just sit money nowhere and make nine percent, ten percent. If you have a good financial advisor. So now you've taken that money out of investments. If you invested for a year, a hundred thousand, I believe that you should get $110,000 back in a okay. year. Okay. You I, can't, that hundred thousand cannot make, can, where, where are you going to go to make more than a hundred thousand dollars in that year? What are you going to do? So how do you, you're going to make a bunch of risky investments that can't pay off or might pay off. Okay, so what I'm cur my curious, my I'm curious to know that could be right in. in no, 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 it, it's 100 percent correct. Ten, double digit percentage return is amazing. Mm. So if you put hundred thousand dollars into something, you get you should get ten percent of it. My thing, and I've talked I talked to Brandon about it was, hey, whatever money you invested, take that, add ten percent, take your money back. Now we're at zero. Mm, okay. Now at zero. If that money wasn't there and I took all the risk, but you took the risk out of something that was was going to make, if you just let it sit in the market, was going to make seven or eight percent. And I know the market. I follow the market. I look at the, the, the stock market, uh, S and P five hundred, all that Nasdaq every day. I know what that money would would have made sitting, and it's not ten percent a year. So take your money with a ten percent return, which is amazing. Now let's get to zero. There's red and black. That's why they call it. Uh, what is it called? Uh, black. Black Friday yeah. after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. They call it Black Friday because red means negative, black means positive, and every store is black the Friday after Thanksgiving because everybody's shopping for Christmas, and that's why they call it Black Friday. So get in, the, get in the black. Let's get us to zero, and let's get in the black with our investment of what this show is flipping. Once now we're flipping money, take your money, take a return on your money, and I'm fine with that. And now let's move forward and let's break this money down to what the worth is. If I'm one, if, if, if there's four people on the show, I'm worth 25% of that show. And probably more, but I'll take 25% because I know my value. Mm. I know what I bring to every show. Every, everything I touch is bettered by my personality, my, my sense of humor and all that stuff. So that's what it is. And that's, that's how the breakdown was. It wasn't like, man, hey, fuck that. We need some money. It was, it, it was very strategically, financially, number-driven, number 
and it just couldn't work out. And we've had we had we had ten meetings or more about it, and it just couldn't work out because we couldn't get to the same point of finding the value of what you're worth. So your question is a great question, but the value of what you're worth is a diluted question because everybody has to figure that out. Mm. And my my value is at least what portion of the people that are on camera is. This this podcast right now, not to hurt your feelings, this is 70% me, mm. 80% me. I mean, you know I, what I'm saying? Like I, I feel you. I, I like so, but that's and that's why I think because as being men, I feel like we should be to have these conversations and not yeah. be taken personal, right? I feel like two things should be able to coexist and we should be able to find some type of boundaries or leverage to, to, to compromise, right? So your idea of what you thought is, yo, from what I learned from my financial advisors is you make if double digits is great. That's what you learn, right? Yes. And granted, it sounds great to me because just being honest, I ain't touched none of that, nowhere near that much money, so I really don't know. So I'm just going to take it at face value. But to somebody else who've been making that money and making the investments, who know who, who's to say that 10% is good enough for them, right? That's one. Two, my second point is you could feel that you're 70% of the show, right? And that's cool. And I can respect that, but I can also respectfully disagree because I know the work that I put in. Granted, you're, you're dope. You're a dope-ass personality, but I, I don't take it personal because you should feel like that. Shit, you yeah. should feel like you... 100%. That don't have shit to do with me. But yeah. I know how I feel, and I know as a yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we should be able to come to a conversation and be like, you know what? Even if you feel that way, how do we compromise? How do we How do we come to a median? And I think this is the conversation. Fuck the I am athlete, the pivot. It's, just, it's, just, it's bigger than that. Cause that's, and this is what I want to talk about, because you guys, inf- it's, it's so much bigger than you, uh, Brandon Marshall, fucking Chad Johnson, and uh, F- Freddie, Fr- Fred Taylor. It's, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than RC. It's bigger than fucking uh, Shady McCoy. It's bigger than that. It's about the people that you're inspiring and how do we make the world better. For, and I'm not trying to sound politically, but it, that's what it's about. So we could talk about that. You say you feel, you 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 think you um, you 70 percent, and I say I don't agree. Then how do we move forward? Is it it's just like fuck it? Like we gonna just get up and lead a podcast? No. And then then you have you have those conversations. That's the thing. Like. It's so funny that it's cool. It's cool that you ask it. It's cool that you see, like you're trying to see the approach to, you're really asking how do you approach business? How do you approach value? And then from the other side of the return of things and you have to make, you have to make money make sense. Mm -hmm. It has to make sense to you. So if you take a hundred thousand dollars, you have it, you have it sitting, you can give it to somebody and they can make, Seven, six, seven percent. It's easy to make. I can make you six, seven percent a year, mm-hmm. right? So if you take that same money and put it into something, and you can make six or seven percent on that, what's the point of doing it? Mm. Because you can sit and not do nothing. And I was saying, like you, like you see, you don't know about money and all this stuff. That's what you're working with right now. Like historically, six, seven, five, seven, five to seven percent is kind of like that's that's not hard to make in the stock market. Just let the, let it ride and do like that. The part of it is the riskier side of things. So when you get risky, now you're put now you're putting it out and trying to do it. So that's why you go up to a different percentage and say, okay, well now we need to do this. So I put the money out there in a risk factor. Okay. And so that's the thing that you have to uh, put a value on. But it's no different than putting it in the stock market. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Like it, 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 it's not like you can't you can't put any risk factor or anything. You do you buy a house and try to t- flip it. You're trying to make a certain percentage of whatever money you put out. You buy a two hundred thousand dollar house. You're gonna do the math on okay. If I can flip this, I'm gonna spend thirty thousand. So that's two thirty. I can sell it for four hundred. Okay, so now I made one seventy. Like you do the math. Pr- the math problem on that situation. That's all that money is. And that's what we don't know. Like there's no relationships in money. Mm. Money doesn't have a heart. Returns don't have a heart. Nothing ha- like that doesn't have a heart. The heart, the emotion, the, 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 the we're friends or we're not friends. That's where things get flawed, mm. but money doesn't have a heart. And that's where I sit with everybody other than my wife. Money doesn't have, I have no, I have no emotional attachment to anything that has, that has me making withdrawals from my account. If I have to put some money in and you have to put some money in, talk to me about the money side of it, not the, 
man, we boys and you dope. Okay, I'm dope. I know I'm dope. Where's my check? What percentage am I making? And that I think that that's the thing. Bigger picture, that's the thing that a lot of people get caught up in. Mm. Is the emotion, the emotion of stuff. And uh and even the thing I'll say, like the 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 experience of what I bring to this podcast, I bring that podcast. Like I put a value, I put a I I put a value on my time. Mm. And for you to run up to, run up on me and ask me to come on, I was like, bro, young man doing this thing. And I put a value on my time, but I did it because I was like, shit, now I can promote my man restaurant. Now I can promote this. Now I can promote that. I did it all strategically. It's all a, a strategy of what you do and how you do it and how you can uplift other people. But, yeah, it, it, every, everything, everything has a, uh, a return. Mm. And that's what you got to do is take the emotion out of it and try to find a return. So speaking of emotion, and right, how did that make you feel personally, though? Like seeing that that went down like that and you lost friends from this. How, when you go home and you speak to your wife and y'all had those conversations, what are those conversations like? Uh, from what, leaving I Am Athlete? Mm -hmm. From the oh, split? No, 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 nothing. Dang. No big deal. Like, I have great friends. <laughs> Easy baby. Easy Atlanta Harris, right, my, right. my man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, Easy and, and, and T and J and Jarvis. And, but I got, I got plenty of friends, like, we did, and we didn't lose, we lost a, a level of friendship on the business side, but it's not like, like I said, I, I'm not fighting anybody. Like, it's not like that. Like, it's not even, even the thing about like, um, uh, the, the locker room. I'll tell you this. So when I retire, a lot of people say, what they say? They're like, what do, you, what do you miss? People say, I miss the locker room. Why they say I miss the locker room? They pull me some of this. They say, why do I miss the locker room? Because they, they miss talking to people and having friends and having, um, you know, people to talk to every day. I don't miss the locker room at all mm. because I have friends. Like, I have real, I have true friends. I don't need a locker room to have friends. And that's the same thing to answer your question. I don't need business to have friends. I have, I have about, I'll tell you, six. I have a thread with them. They're about seven, eight dudes that are my ace boom coons down from day one, and they're going to be down from day one before the money, before the success, before anything, and that's my circle. And I don't need a locker room to do that. I know, and they all here this day, this day, day in Atlanta this weekend, and we all together, and we hanging and vibing. Like, I don't miss, I don't need a, the people that are friends with me are going to be friends with me no matter what we do, no matter what they do. And some of my friends have businesses. One of my buddies have a construction business, and he asked me to invest, and the numbers weren't right. And I was like, nah, bro, I can't invest in that. And he was like, cool. And he went on, and he's successful. Motherfucker make money. And I chose not to invest in it, and he continued to thrive in that mm. business. And there's no hard feelings about that and then that. And we were just, we were in Magic City last night together. You know what I'm saying? Like, emotion and business can be separated. But people that can't separate it, it's a problem. Because now, oh, well, you don't believe in me. I don't believe in your business. We, we tight. We cool. But I'm not giving you no money. Mm. And you can separate that thing. A lot of people can't, and that's that's the, the the hang up that a lot of people have. They can't separate friendship and business. If the if the APR, the return, the percentage doesn't make sense to me, I'll say no. And then you can go on and make millions of dollars in that business, and I'm not gonna be upset that I didn't invest, and you shouldn't be upset if you go broke in that business. Mm. I decided not to fuck with you. You decided to continue. If you made $17 billion, I'm going to sit back and be like, bro, congratulations. Bro, you did your thing. If you go broke, I'm going to be like, damn, bro, I told you this shit wasn't going to work. So you, feel, you would feel that way even if you didn't have the pivot? Like, yeah. you wouldn't be hurt? Man, I, so what about, I don't care. So what about this? It's a real conversation. Let's a lot talk. Of, a lot of, thank you for allowing us to talk. I fuck with that. A lot of people caught strays from that. Mm-hmm. Let's talk, let's talk about it, right? Your wife, that, it, that built a, a platform for not only you, your wife, right? Mm -hmm. She was on I Am Woman. I'm, I don't know. I don't know y'all conversations, but that's why I'm asking these questions. I would assume that that was something that she enjoyed. How, how, did, you, did you ever sit back home and have those conversations with your wife? Like, damn, like, how did that make you feel? How did, how did that affect you and, and what you had going on? 
Yeah, we did. We did, and we talked about that. And as the platform, as we build our, our platform, then we've talked about doing, uh, uh, you know, seeing if we can try to, p- you know, pivot that to something else with the women. But it, it's me and my wife, and it's something that is I found out that's special. Like we're on the like we're on the same accord. Mm. Like Asia, Asia really fucks with me. You know what I'm saying? Like she sees it and I fuck with her. So we we talk about it and I know that like that wasn't premier to her, you know, her her success. Like she does her own thing. That was like an add-on to what what she's already does and what she already got going on. And then for me, the media side was bigger on my side than hers. So it wasn't, it wasn't like the conversation that we had about that was she was like, yeah, it's no more I am woman, but she wasn't, she wasn't tore up about it. And I was like, well, we'll do something else, the pivot. We'll do something else and pivot and do that. But it, it, it's like, a, it's a synergy between us where I know where I know where she sits, she knows where I sit, and we just figure that shit out on the on the between us. But it wasn't it wasn't a situation where it was it was like combative or anything because it it was it wasn't like she she didn't care. Like it was it wasn't like, oh I lost I am woman. Like I knew she wasn't she I knew before the whole thing was happening because the thing happened over so many over so many months that like we talked about that beforehand. I was like, "Hey, you know what I'm saying? Well, this might this might go left." And she was like, "Cool." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the thing about the communication. Like, to this question, I knew I knew my wife's answer three months before I left. I am athlete because we talk, and I know how she, I know where she's at with things. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't nothing like, "Well, if this happens," and she, you know, if if, if y'all don't do it, then. You know, this is gone. You cool, baby. Do your thing. You a star. You know what I'm saying? Like, she encourages me, like, you're a star. Like, go do your thing. Okay. Yeah. And and, and it and, and it's 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 spoken upon before anybody else has to ask the question. So that's the thing with having the, like a woman like my wife, is that you can you can foresee, you can foresee what's about to happen. And you can foresee the options. There's two options. You're going to stay or you're going to go. We sit down. We lay in the bed. We sit and watch. What's that shit called? The Dragon, Dragon House. Oh, that's a pretty good show. We sit yeah. and watch the fucking <laughs> Dragon, Dragon House. We sit and watch the fucking Dragon House. And then she'll sit there and we'll say, yeah, what are we going to do here? And then we'll pause the Dragon House and then we'll talk. Man, we'll Is it called the Dragon House? Can we get a fucking name, oh, name check? House, House of, of Dragon, Dragon with the oh, Garyan. House of the Dragon. The, the, the Garyans with them bitches with the blonde hair? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we're really sitting somewhere, well, you know, this, uh, this can happen, that can happen, that can happen. Yeah, well, if this happened, this, well, I don't feel comfortable with that, and I would do this. And we sit and talk about situations. And that's the thing about relationships. I said it earlier, the communication and shit, that's why the big picture, to answer your question, anything about me and, me and Asia, you just have to talk shit out. Mm. And a lot of people, especially I say it, a lot of black men don't like to talk. They, they in their own little world. Ah, I do what I do. No, talk, 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 talk. We've had, we've had, we have issues recently. And my wife told me, she was like, you have to talk. Tell me you're upset. Tell me you don't like this. Tell me you don't like that. And that's what I work on. But I think we do have a, a situation. Bit, I would say business-wise, we have a fluent communication that, this is what she likes. I know what she likes. She knows what I like. She knows what the return I want. I know what she wants to do. She's big into real estate and stuff. I'm big into like trying diversified stuff, like trying something, and then she'll talk me off the ledge. I'll talk her off the ledge. But business-wise, when you're work, when you're working with your spouse, I would say y'all have to have a a open communication, you know, open communication line with both of y'all. If if you really want to work with your spouse, moving off the work right, but staying in the, the like the lane of the spouse. You, we were talking about earlier how uh, your wife got you into the um, just trying new things, traveling, uh, doing the uh, what is the shit called, the nudist colonies and yeah. things like that. When you first met her, right, 
and you saw she was into these things was it was it ever at a point um like were you ever like uh how do, how do i say this what's the word you know we when, we when we see things that's different we don't like it so like was it ever like oh, was you scared like, of oh, it like was you did you reject it at first that's what i mean that's like um no i, I push back because i'm like even the traveling thing I didn't really care about traveling, but she wanted to travel. She wanted to go. She likes to ski. I don't want to ski. Like it's certain things that I that I did, and I did push back, and I didn't want to do it. But I knew she wanted to do it, so she'd be like, "Yeah, we're doing this," and she kind of set it up. And I'm like, "Okay, let's." So go. even with the nudist stuff like that, so like it was. Yeah, no, no, no. The first time, well, the, I said she lined me up going to like the new beach. Oh, so, so she she lines you up. She's playing her cards like, let's do this. But no, first. but she was like, hey, she's she, warming you up. Yeah, she warmed me up. She's like, I'm <laughs> go, I'm, I'm gonna go to the new beach. You know, I'm I'm a tan, so she I can take my shirt off her sleeve and tan all of it. Yeah, so so she she went to the new beach, and then like she called me, like she called, called me and told me, so I had to work. So I'm working, and she's like, yeah, I'm going to the new beach down there. It's Hallover, right? Hallover. So she's like, I'm going to the new beach in Hallover, and I'm like, cool. Like I don't care. Like I. I you know, I trust my wife. Like I'm like, I'm not worried about you looking at no dicks and all that stuff. You you gonna see some dick, but I'm not so worried about you. So you was already you. Okay, comfortable in it. I was already comfortable with like okay. what, what what she wanted to do because she's like, hey, I, so I can go take my take my clothes off and tan my body. And then honestly, her tanning her body is good for me because now I get to dibble and dabble in the pieces okay. of the tan body. So I'm like, yeah, tan yourself. Whatever. And this you was at do. 29. You was okay with like you were okay with that. At no, 20? this is way before then. Uh, twenty seven. You said y'all married what? Twelve years? Yeah, I was twenty. We met oh nine. I asked that. Yeah, I asked, I asked oh, if nine. y'all didn't hear. So, she said she's always been naked. That's what she said. But yeah, like I she, asked, she just she stayed. She <laughs> she, she she. And I knew she was coming because she was she was like she'll walk around the house naked when, before we had kids. Like she'd just be naked all day in the house and on the back porch. She'll be back there and all. And then it just kind of went to. You know, I'm going to the new beach. Cool. Like, it was nothing big. So and I, she was like, come to the new beach with me. And I was like, okay, cool. I asked that because, you know, like, you know how men are, right? Men is, I feel like we full of shit. I say that and say, like, what happened is we always, like, we want this type of girl, this type of girl, this type of girl. And the moment we get, like, a girl that's, like, too freaky, we be like, oh, nah, who the fuck? Like, where the fuck you get this from? Yeah. Like, you kind of reject it. Like, nah, like, you, you say, you talk, we talk all this shit. And then we get a girl, she do a little something down there. You be like, whoa. Like, who the that's fuck you uh, do that on? Like, where the fuck that come from? And that might be why I married. Because yeah, like she she uh So you didn't reject that. You was you loved it. No, I really did. I loved it because it was like it was like something that I haven't seen before. You know what I'm saying? Like you you see girls, you see it, it's a bunch of pretty people in the world. Mm. Like it's a bunch of sexy people, it's a bunch of motherfuckers with booties and titties and faces and lips and whatever whatever you like. You a booty guy, titty guy, hip guy, leg guy, whatever. It's going to be and then even to this day, like, me and my wife go to strip clubs together. And, like, she'll be like, she's fine. And I'll be like, yeah, she's fine. And we'll go get her to do a dance. Like, we appreciate the female body together. Like, we know what the parts are supposed to look like. And it's always going to be something out there that's amazing. Mm -hmm. But now you have to go to the layers of everything and see. And with my wife, her layers of everything – and it's it's a, it's a saying that we have. I tell her I love your crumbs. So everybody has a sandwich, mm -hmm. the looks, the 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 meat, the mayonnaise, okay. the whatever the fuck you have. Okay. But then there's a little crumbs on the side of the plate. There's the there's what, the, what is that? The 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 punctuality. Okay. The the cleaning. Okay. The cleanliness. To this and that. Like, I don't, like... The small things. The, the small things about it. Like, my wife would love me to wash more. She would love me, like, she's like, come home and take a shower. And I'm like, man, I'm watching the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's just little, it's little things that you have to appreciate. So I call, we call it the crumbs. And it's something that we had a whole relationship. But I, I say it to my wife and I say, I love your crumbs. The, the sandwich is beautiful. Everybody sees the sandwich. Y'all can look and see her. Like, it's amazing. Focused. Smart. Fucking degrees from Howard, number one on the tennis team. Like, it's amazing that. But there, there's, there's certain things that you have that I don't like, but I gotta appreciate them because we're together. Okay. And that's the one thing. That soulmate shit. Like, 
I was made for you, you were made for me, that is a thousand percent bullshit. There is no one that loves everything about another person. Mm. There's nobody in the fucking world that was made to be with another person. Facts. Perfectly. No cap. Okay, yeah. Oh, you don't, you know, you, you. Oh, I don't like honey mustard. I don't like honey mustard either. You want blue cheese? I want blue cheese too. I don't like ranch. Like, there is nothing that lines up perfectly. That soulmate shit is fuck, fucking full of shit. So there's going to be 10%, 20% of another person that you deal with, and then there's going to be 80 or 90% that you love. Mm. People I, tolerate. I, I people love, love yeah. I love 90 plus percent of my wife. There's is that the safe things. answer right now? Or? What's that? Is that just the safe answer right now? No, no, no. I really do. Okay, I was just making sure. But there, 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 there's, there's. You sure it's not 85%? But okay. There's five. There's is that five, still good? 85 is really good, right? 85 is good, bro. Okay. But there's five. Like there's, 70, 30, that's not bad. There's 10, there's 10, 5 to 10% of shit that I can't stand. Mm. But this 90 is so fucking beautiful. Okay. And amazing that you got to deal with that, 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 that 10. So let me ask you this. Since we, we got up through the series, we're going to have a little bit of fun, right? So you had, the, you had the conversation with Kevin Hart, right? And for some reason, you say nudists and everybody, the entire world go to fucking um, swingers. Yeah. Right? He, was, he, he had this conversation with my highest friend. Uh, they did a little situation, and then he could never look at his wife the same, right? Mm. I mean, shit, y'all been doing everything together. Like, y'all look at women together. Like, did you ever think about, did y'all ever think about doing a swinging thing? No. Well, not at all. And, you and that? Never, I've never thought about it. That's funny you asked that. I've never thought about it, and she's never said anything about it. So you sound, you, you seem like you're so like you're confident in everything because you handle that. Who's that? If could I could I I couldn't I couldn't watch nobody pile dick in my wife. <laughs> that was you asking? Yeah 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 yeah. I ain't gonna watch nobody pile dick in my wife. <laughs> You you asked that question real slick, but yeah, ain't nobody. <laughs> yeah, ain't nobody piling dick in my wife in front of me. We, we it's, gonna, it's gonna be some fucking and some fighting. Yeah, we got we, we yeah. got four fights in you. Yeah, no, I don't have four fights in you because I'm not gonna Is co-sign. Good? I ain't gonna co-sign nobody fucking my wife. So if your wife came to, she wanted that, she wanted to try it, and she wanted to try some some swinging. Yeah. We had to have a long conversation, but I, my answer would be no. My answer would be no. I ain't going to lie to you. I can't deal with that. Especially if, if you got more dick than me, then over for him. That fucks your confidence all up. Yeah. <laughs> so nah, you, you, you going way to I thought I went to the back. Now you going way to the back? Oh, my God. I went God. to the kitchen, and now you going to the backyard. You back there by the pool. I don't want you. Why you back by the pool? I ain't never been to the pool. Yo, that's. Yo, oh, my God, bro. I think, yo. I, I wanted to ask that question. Yo, I, um, I do yeah, want to. Yeah, no, no, no. It, 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 and it's funny. A lot of people ask that shit, and it's not. It's funny. We're not. We don't swing. Like, we don't swing. But like, everybody just took it there. Like, every, Eric, I feel like everybody just went straight to swinging. But that's what people love to do, and that's why social media is beautiful. It's, it's like an ugly truth. Mm. Is that that's where people want to go and turn it. It's a bunch of things that happen that I've been a part of that people just take it to a different level. And I don't care. Fuck you, whatever you want to do. The Russell Wilson thing. That's People how I was going to go. To a different gonna... level. Fuck you. I don't care. I don't care what this man does on the field. I don't care what he does. He's lame. Like, I... dudes would be lame. Dudes be lame. You think he's lame because. No, I no, think... no, 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 no. You, said, you just said because. I don't need it because. I'm going to turn to the interviewer. Is Russell Wilson lame? No. He's not lame. He's not lame. He's not lame. No. Why not. not? Because first of all, he's in, he, he, he's the embodiment. He's an embodiment of what a black man should be. He's good. He's good to his wife. Uh huh. Right. He, he's, he's a yeah. He, that he, doesn't make you not lame. So what makes him lame then? Because you said you don't need a because. Do you want to hang with this motherfucker bro, on a what, Friday what, night? What I got to do with anything? That's what lame means. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does, bro. No, bro, it doesn't. That's what it is. Bro, I, he so, is. I'll tell you this. Great husband, great father. He took little future, and he's he's. Taking another man's kid under yes, his wing. That's fucking that's, great. That's amazing. I know. And I respect that. that and I love who him. he is as a man. I know. And who he speaks as a man. So how dare you hey, call no, 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 no. lame? Takes care of his wife. So how? No, no, no. Listen, nigga. Go ahead. You keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> will have money his whole life. Going to take care of his parents. Do everything he needs to. 
I respect him. Okay. The nigga is a fucking duck. So how? What you said everything that made him great. So what makes him a lame? Because of how he talks. You see the videos. You see the Mr. Incredible. You see all the stuff. Have you just seen a recent one? I haven't, he, I haven't have seen you it. seen a recent one when he was picking out his suits? I haven't seen none of that. Yes, no, yes, no. He changes his voice. Bro, he's it, different. Huh? He's different. No, he's just he's square. He's like it's nothing. It's it's a big problem, but it's not a problem. Thank you, bro. I'm hot. You got me fucking hot. Sweating and shit. Yeah. But I say one thing, I said it on um another show. I want to call you out. On me? I want to call you out. Call me out then. Okay. You ever heard the saying that a hit dog a holler? No, I never heard that shit. Hit dog a holler. If you have a pack of dogs, you throw a rock into it, the one that get hit by a rock yells. Right? No, I never. I, but you understand what I'm saying? No, nah, I don't. You got, a big, you got a big group of dogs in the corner, and I throw a rock. The one that rock hits, that's motherfucker going to say, ha, ah. ha, Okay. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Lame people protect. Lame people. You call me lame people. I'm just saying, like, like for, your, for your approach, I've said it before. I'm it's okay. okay. Bro, lame people protect. Hey, hey, no, 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 no. What happens is, no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You heard this? What's that? No, no, no. Fuck that. Because you ain't about to just. I'm just saying, like, who fuck you? Hold on. No, 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 no. You want to say that? I'm not a man. No, no, no. You got to go else? No, what else? Let me see. No, what else? Yeah. Since we dare. The fuck? Who is it? No, no, no. Fuck that. Fuck that. Fuck y'all for laughing. What I'm saying is. We all agree he was wearing. What I'm saying is, no. But that's the thing. That's what makes me sad, no. Because I don't give a fuck. If it was a million people here, y'all, I got my own opinion. But I mean, what I'm saying is, you know what happens? You ever heard the saying of, oh, yes, man? Right? So fuck when you throw a fucking rock at a dog. Yo, nah, what about a lot of niggas ain't telling you to say that face because you got a lot to offer them. And I'm, I'm the only one that can challenge your way of thinking. And I feel like, yeah, you putting down another black man that's doing well is lame. If you want to talk about what's really lame. Yeah, that's this lame. Is, this is the thing. That's lame. This is the thing. I honestly don't care if you think I'm lame. Okay. Because people are thinking. I don't either. Oh. But you care if I think Russell's lame. I don't. <laughs> it's yes, you do. It's 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 you do. You do. Let me ask you, you 
you uh you see Jackson State this year? Yeah. 4-0. Mm -hmm. Some big time wins. Yeah. Are they making you believe now? In HBCUs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm coming around. I, it has to be um set consistency. Okay. And Travis Johnson, the number one recruit, the cornerback, he came. Like, I, I've seen it, but I just really and it's funny because my wife, my wife went to Howard. I have Howard sweats, sweatshirts, I have Howard t shirts. The nerve of this guy. The nerve of this guy. I got all that shit. Oh my God. But, but, that's what you can say, but <laughs> HBCUs are so far behind the Power Five. Okay. I mean, I, I, and that's the thing, I do not want the HBCUs to succeed. I just don't see how they can catch up with Florida, with the Michigan, with the Texas. Because those people get billions of dollars a year pumped into their program, and HBCUs don't. And that's, and that's the one thing that I keep stressing. Like, if y'all want Jackson State to be successful, give them eight hundred million dollars a year or two. And is. that's where I wanted to go with this. Why not champion behind that, right? You're, and this is my whole concept about this. Like, moving forward, you're a black man. You're gonna have black kids. You know what I'm saying? Your kids, yeah, your black, your, yeah, your black kids want to have more black kids. So instead of saying, like, I get they can be behind, but you can start a movement for a bunch of millionaires like yourself and all these other niggas that's making all this money to get millions into these programs. Instead of saying, we're the behind, no, let's get on the forefront of it, like Deion Sanders did, right? He's coaching. Yeah. Let's get on the forefront of it and get these kids these money because I got the influence to touch the other millionaires. Yeah, I'm not giving anybody a dime. Oh, my God. I'm <laughs> not giving, but, but, but. I'm not giving Florida. I'm, I'm a U up guy. I got a damn big tattoo on my wrist. I'm not giving Florida a penny. Why would I give anybody else a penny? Why would I try to give other people? Because of this. I know. But because of this. I know. But what are we going to do? What are we going to do? No, you were asking this one to ask you a question. What are we going to do? At least they can, they can, we can move No, forward. at least. No, not at least. Move forward what? We can have. Better, whatever. You said we need more money. Better we can have more money. Yeah, we can have more money. We got more resources. We can see that. You know what? It is cool to go to HBCUs. You know what? I see all these NFL players promoting HBCUs. Maybe I should go to HBCU. What can it do? It can do so much. It can do a hell of a lot. Then saying no, it's it's this and that, and it's not this and not that. No. What do you mean? And you you think you think that that that's the thing? Even the the young kids. I said it before. You're asking an 18 year old kid. To not go to Florida, Michigan, Texas, UCLA, whatever, LSU, to go to HBCU to up the brand, right? You're asking people to put their hard-earned money money into an HBCU to up the brand. It's hard to do. It really is. I believe you. It's hard. No, I'm not fighting. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm it's, not, hard, it's hard. No, I'm to not, hard I'm not, I'm like, not arguing that. Yeah, all. give me a million dollars but I think because you're black. Like, Hey, you tell an uh, eighteen-year-old kid that's coming out the number one, number one quarterback in the in the, in the nation. Go to go to Howard, go to Hampton, go to Jackson State, where you're going to play these lower-tier teams. You're not going to get respected on the level of the Power Five that you're doing. That that the league is watching because everybody thinks they're going to go to college and go to the NFL. You're not getting the same view. You're not getting the same respect playing those teams. So you're going to tell an 18-year-old to, 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 to champion this? You're going to tell a, couple, a bunch of millionaires to champion this? You can call me out on it, and you can get my friends to do it, but it could have been done years ago. Why, haven't, why hasn't it been done by other black millionaires? Why hasn't it been done? There's millionaires that went to Howard. Who's the dude that paid off the... Um, the uh, Robertson. The billionaire that paid off everybody's... Yeah, why is there not more Robert Smith that pay off everybody's student loans? Why, why is why is that not there? So you want to call me out on I as a black man? I need to get my friends, my my millionaire friends, to get millions of dollars to these HBCUs. Why haven't they done it in the past? Why hasn't a bunch of other people done it in the past? Because it's not it's not it's you you don't see what the back end is. It sounds good on the front end for you to say hey. Support black people, yeah, I love it. But on the back end, what is it really doing? What is it really doing if I give $200,000 to Hampton? What is it doing? Howard, what is it doing? What's it going to do? do you have an answer? No, I don't. You say it's going to do something, but no, you don't have an answer, and nobody's giving that answer. So the same thing we talked about earlier with the, with the, with the, the back end of things, the, the, 
the residuals, the reaction, the, the action and reaction? What's the reaction of me giving, taking 100,000, quarter million, two, half a million dollars and giving it to somebody? What am I really doing for that school? Has anybody ever laid that out? Have you ever seen it? I'm just here. Has anybody, no, I'm saying, has anybody ever seen it? No, I'm saying, I see what you're saying, but no, and I've had this, the, the one thing about the HBCU thing, I've been, I, I, like, they hit me on a lot, and I've asked so many people this. What is it? Like, what do you think it's going to do? You want me to get a private equity together with all my friends and give money to what? HBCUs? What's the answer? Because everything has, there's, there's an answer to a problem. Whatever the problem is, what's the answer to it? Give me the answer, and I I can support that answer. The only answer that I have personally is just this one step forward. You say we start this conversation. You said we like the it's it's, eight, it's it's millions of dollars that's being funded into these power five uh, universities every year, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's what you start with, I'm like okay. If that's what if that's what gets it going, then let me get a hundred of my millionaires and put a million in one school. Let's let's start one at a time. I'm just, I, I'm not a million. I don't have the money. I've never seen that motherfucking money. All I'm just saying is I'm thinking if there, if, if you lead the conversation with is billions of dollars being funded into these schools every year, then okay, let's try to get millions of dollars funded into the to, to the to the HBCUs because it's not. You know what I'm saying? That's what what what's the answer? It's one foot at a time. It's one step at a time. One. That's all I can think of. Yeah, and when, when, when and this, what's the start? What's the next step? The and that's the thing oh. I've never heard. I, no, not to cut you off. But that's the thing I've never heard the back end of it. I've heard this. I've heard this argument before. I've, I've argued this argument before. Of, we'll do something for what? What are we? What are we where are we? What are we pushing for? What are we thriving for? Well, you want to thrive for black people to be better. You thrive for the um, historically black colleges and universities, like the black. And I have no problem. And that's the thing. People be like. Oh, you're you're bad enough to HBCUs. I don't bad enough. I love. I'm going to have this damn homecoming. We're going up there in a couple months. Like I love it. And she got to stop at working homecoming too. So. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't do that. Y'all just straight. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That'd be great. Said already, and so I would, I will support, I will 
throw idols, motherfucking goddamn uh, walk around and sell shit for them. But when you're, money. when you're that far behind, I ain't giving nobody money. But I'm giving Floyd money. I, I ain't giving nobody money but my wife and my kids. Yeah, yeah, it kiss my ass. Yeah, I work off my motherfucking money. You kiss my ass. But I would support anything that black people do. But I don't. I. I. It's hard to see. It's hard to see how you could catch up with Texas and all that. It's hard to see, and that's the thing. I support it, but it's a very, it's a very tough sell for me to tell me. Like you said, give a hundred thousand dollars to Jackson, so I can. And then I see them right back where they are now. Was that money well spent? Hey, I don't have the answer, man. And that's what I'm saying, and I don't have the answer either. But when people put 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 my, you know, saying put my piece in the fire, which I love it, I was, I explained it totally. Like, no, oh, it's 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 a bigger thing than trying to get a bunch of eighteen year olds to go to HBCUs and then trying to get HBCUs with people. Oh, you think Jackson State will ever win a national championship? Beat Alabama? Beat beat Georgia? Beat Michigan? Like, I, I don't I, I think it's possible because even shit back in the day. Um shit wait. Shit back in the day, um fam you beat the you, right? In the sixties or something like that. So like, it could it could happen. I say that in our lifetime. In the sixties. Yeah, but I'm saying if it happened then they would they say uh, the world repeat all what happens in the world is it repeats itself, so it could happen then. So you really believe that the HBCU is going to win the national championship? I said it could happen. We seen HBCUs compete in that before. And, 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 a, and a media can come in here and they don't just go right now. It's a chance. Be honest, ain't it? It's a chance. It's just unrealistic. Yeah. But there has to be, but to all the whole question, bro, there has to be an answer. And that's my thing about this, an HBCU thing. People don't give me answers, they give me problems. Problems are easy to talk about. But do you go seek the answers when you just don't get answers? Are, I do seek answers, and there's no answers out there. And you can't give me an answer because I've asked you a number of times. I'm not in the office. I, 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 I talk to Dion. I talk to people. There's no answer. What do you say? Call keep, right promoting, keep promoting. Keep promoting them to the school. Keep promoting the school. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not. It's not an answer. It's like oh, uh, it's 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 a, it's a hope. It's a it's a wish. Okay. I don't run on wishes and hopes. I run on facts. And there's no fact of how. They can catch up. So tell me what I need to do, and I'll do it. But yo, I love this conversation. It was great. Yeah, man, I enjoy it. I appreciate you pulling up, man. Man, all day, man. Yeah, y'all that come with graffiti, they got a fire ass crab. I fucking little yeah. wings. How you how you how you adjusted to the new fame, man? I feel like it's like you're really a you're really a celebrity out here, man. Like you special. Like people love it. I gotta adjust to that. Just nothing. Like, what is it? People talk to me more. People talk to me in the airport. Like, it's, it ain't no people. Don't be giving me free, like, free, free People send me all kind of shit, man. I appreciate it. Thank y'all so much. The people send me all kind of shit. They send me t-shirts, thank you, hats, and, and trays, and water, and thank y'all so much. Please keep sending me. And I'm wear it. I'm going wear this. Uh, this is my man, Ricky. Ricky Williams. We got, he got his weed company. Appreciate you, Rick. Yeah, so Ricky, come on in next, man. Hey, I I, I really appreciate it, bro. No, thank you. Oh, no, brother. Yes. Tell him crowd, everybody. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. It's a wrap. We out.